top five tips for getting started in Blackboard Ultra. By the end of this presentation, faculty will be able to customize the Start Here area for students, add a syllabus to a Blackboard Ultra section, create a learning module with content, set up the gradebook, and make a course available to students. In summer 2023, MATC updated Blackboard to the Ultra course view. All courses you teach this fall and going forwards will use the new streamlined and student-centered Ultra course view. This move to Ultra courses is an essential step to improving and innovating an inclusive student-centered online learning experience. This update is an excellent opportunity to revise and revitalize course design. For the faculty appendix, all faculty are required to use Blackboard for all instructional methods to ensure high quality instruction fostering student success. At a minimum, you should have the following items added to your semester course shells and make the course shells available for student access by their section start dates. You should have a syllabus, announcements or course messages, learning modules with content, a career essentials assessment if appropriate, and a gradebook that is reflective of all the assessments defined in your course syllabus. And with that, let's begin reviewing our five tips for getting started. Tip number one, customize the Start Here area of your semester course. Every new course shell issued in Blackboard comes with a student's Start Here content area to customize for your students. The Start Here area is a page that can contain a welcome message and brief instructions to help students become oriented to the course. To customize this area, click on the dotted icon next to the item and select Edit. Make sure to remove the template instructions at the top of the page once you have added your own instructions. In this worked example, I will show you. Here's this example of a template ultra course where I have a Welcome Student Start Here folder. I can click on it to view the Getting Started area. To edit the Getting Started area, I'm going to click the three dots and click Edit. And on this page, I will see the template information that tells me what I should add to this page. To add some content, I can click the plus button and click Add Content. And here, I can use the text editor tools to add the content. So let's say I want to attach an image. So let's say I want to grab an image out of my folder here on my computer that I have my course content organized in. Let's say I want to insert this nice course map image as an overview to the course navigation and what students will learn. And then underneath it, let's say I want to put some text. Let's say I want to add a course overview paragraph along with my, my um, expectations for participation and communication, how to get started, and all of that other good stuff. Okay, once I've added the content that I want to this area, I can click the Save button, and it, that will add it to the page. Now as a final step, make sure to remove this template information because students would see this otherwise. You can click the three dot icon next to it and choose Delete, and that removes that information. And then finally, you can control the visibility of this content through the options in the right corner. Right now it's set to Visible to Students. Tip number two, upload a syllabus. Faculty must upload a syllabus to each semester course shell syllabus area. This creates consistency in course design that ensures that students can easily locate this document and that the college's analytic reports correctly count the presence of syllabi in active sections. You may download a current syllabus template from the Center for Teaching Excellence's webpage to help you with preparing this document. Let's return to my view of the example course and see how this works. So in this example course, I'm going to click on my Welcome Student Start Here area to expand the area and look at my options inside of it. And here I can locate my syllabus um, placeholder area. And to access the syllabus and edit the information, I can either click on the link to the syllabus area or click on the three dot icon and choose edit. That either will take me to this page 
where I will see the default content of this page, which is an altered document. And I can add my information to this page by rolling my mouse over the screen and clicking the plus icon where I want that content to go and choosing add content. In the text editor that appears I can add some text and then in the next line I'm going to choose my attachment icon and then choose my syllabus document on my computer and choose open and it's going to insert the file and then in, in the edit file options that appears it's going to tell me I have some choices I, I can choose to set this file to be viewed and downloaded and I like that choice so I'm going to keep that as the choice students will be able to view the document and download the document so I'm just going to click save and you'll see this placeholder here where this there's this file and click save and what will happen is Blackboard will attempt to render this in a preview window on the page. So when students come to this page they won't necessarily have to download the document right away to view it. They can view a preview right here in this scrolling um, placeholder toolbar. And if they want to they can click on the little download icon inside the previewer to download the file. Okay. Other things to note on this page, um, we have added the syllabus addendums. So I would keep this information. This, these are helpful resources that have college policies and guidelines, especially the student support resources. They're all nicely gathered in one place. Um, and once you have um, edited and added your content to the syllabus page, make sure to remember that you delete this template information in green so that students do not see it. Okay, and as a final step, make sure that the syllabus area is visible to students by reviewing the settings in the top right corner of the screen. Tip 3. Build weekly lesson content. For each week of instruction or unit of content, create a learning module and add content to the learning module. You may turn on progress tracking to help students track their progress in completing modules. Before I demonstrate the process for creating content, it is important to discuss how you might reuse content from original courses and ultra courses. Based upon feedback from our faculty this summer, we strongly recommend using our preferred migration process. In your ultra master shell or semester course shell, create a new folder or learning module and then use ultra's copy content tool to pull materials from your original course into the ultra course. Supported materials will convert to ultra format, but some types of content may require editing. This technique provides a clean and well-structured course build with fewer conversion errors and warnings to fix. We do not recommend importing an original course archive file into an ultra course due to the many differences between the two course experiences and the volume of conversion warnings that may appear. Another important point to know is that the tools for adding third-party publisher content are available through the Ultra Courses content market. When using publisher content in an online, virtual, hybrid, or high-flex section, take care to demonstrate the U.S. Department of Education's requirements for regular and substantive interaction. Publisher content with auto-graded assessments should never replace your presence or duties as an instructor. Pre-recorded videos and automatically scored assessments are activities created through publisher integrations do not count towards regular and substantive interaction. For support or assistance with using publisher integrations, connect with your publisher's technical support directly. To be clear, faculty teaching an online or partially online section are required to demonstrate two regular and substantive interaction strategies per week of instruction in the section. The strategies can include direct instruction through synchronous lectures or regularly scheduled office hours, providing constructive feedback on student assessment submissions, providing information or responding to student questions, and active facilitation of online discussions. Okay, now I'll demonstrate the process for creating a learning module in my example course. In this example, I have a template that was given to me when this course was originally created and it has an example of a lessons or weekly lessons uh, content type. If I click on it, I can see that there 
is an option to add content inside of this. But before I begin, let's say I want to rename this and just make this learning module for one learning module in the course. So I'm going to click the three dot icon and go to edit and I will rename this lesson one. If I want to, I can turn this uh, off hidden from students and I can add a description if I want to, but I'm going to just go ahead and click save and that creates the lesson one learning module structure. Let's say I want to add another um, outside of this module, see how there's like a, a block, like a block outline around this. Go outside of it and click the little plus button that appears underneath it, and then go to create, and then you'll see your list of tools for creating content. So let's say I want to create another learning module. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to call this lesson two. And I'll come back to these settings later. I'm going to keep this hidden from students for the time being. I can add a description later. And I'll click Save. All right, so I've got two lesson modules here. And let's say I want to add content to them. One way I can do that is by going to the plus button and going to Create. And I could use the tools here to build out my content. Another way I can do that, or add content, is when I go to my plus button, I can go to the option called copy content and I can pull content in from another course. So let's see, I want to look for my accessibility ultra course. Okay, so I created an example course in ultra previously and I can choose that or I could choose content from my original course. And here, let's say that I want to pick my lesson one from my lesson one um, learning module from the original course. I'm going to drill down to the content that I want to choose because I might not want to use it all. And I can choose what I want to include. So let's say I want to include my introduction. Let's say I want to include my web quest, my lesson map activity, my quiz, and my assignment, and the lesson close. Okay, I'm going to leave out some of these other things that I don't want to use this time. And then I'll click Start Copy. And because I clicked on that button inside the learning module, the content will eventually be copied into the learning module. And I just have to wait for that process to complete. Okay, it's been several minutes and I can see now that the copy content process has completed and added the materials to my Lesson 1 learning module. And I can see that my introduction item has come in. If I click on this, I can take a quick preview and see how it came in. The image is here. The content has come in nicely. My lists have been formatted. Um, I do see a small issue with the table that I'll have to correct because I tried to embed a file attachment inside the table and it's scaling a little differently. Um, I would just have to adjust the table, but other than that, um, the content looks to be pretty much what I need it to be in this Ultra document. Okay, and then I've got my link to a web web quest that works as expected. I've got my lesson map activity that's an assignment, and everything came in. I had an embedded image and an attached file, actually two attached files, and that came in. Now you may need to adjust some of the text form formatting in in your um, instructions if you embedded um, files within the text, see how it sort of blocks, it creates a block item. That's not a big deal though. You, you could edit that by going to the edit icon and then just adjusting this. I'm just going to take this text and just put it here. There, that looks nicer. And the same thing here. I'm just going to take the text that's wrapping around my file attachment, place it up, and that looks much nicer. Okay. All right. So other than that, just um, review the settings, review your due dates and dates and times on these items to make sure that they are the way you need, and then also make sure that you're setting these to be visible to students. So by default, when Ultra adds content in, it's going to make it unavailable because it will assume that you need to make edits. When you are creating learning modules, make sure that they include an introduction with instructions and any content, activities, and assessments relevant to the unit. 
It should be clearly written for students to understand how they will use course materials to complete assessments and achieve learning objectives. Tip number four, configure your gradebook. For each assessment identified in the syllabus, there must be a column for logging regular grade feedback in the gradebook. An overall grade column must also be present for students to track their progress and final grade. Okay, so now I have an example course that has a couple units of content prepared and for the most part my due dates are up to date and I have assessment columns associated with the assessments that um, I have in my course menu. Whenever you create a graded assignment, a graded discussion forum, a test or a quiz, columns will automatically be populated to the gradebook. But there's a special type of column that I want to highlight showing or how to create. So see how in my lesson two that I have this link to something called Accessible Desi Document Design Web Quest. And it's a link to a Google form. The student will be completing this outside of Blackboard. But I want to give them points for completing this. And the way that I could do this is I could create a special type of assignment in this course menu that I can collect offline that automatically creates a column in the gradebook. So let's say that I want to recreate this and I'm going to just grab a few things here. I'm going to grab the instructions of my accessible um, document design web quest. And let's say I want to click the plus button here and go to create and then choose my assignment type. I'm going to call this web quest 2. I'm going to add some text paste in my instructions. Note that this assignment is going to be worth 20 points. Highlight that. And then in my assignment settings, I'm going to make sure that I assign the correct due date to this. I, said, I believe it's September 8th that I'm going to be collecting this and a, a, a correct date and time. And then underneath the options here, I'm going to collect submissions offline. This means students do not have to submit anything in Blackboard to complete this assignment. They're going to be completing this in um, Google or they could be completing this assignment in class. This would be a flexible option for creating a gradebook column that's associated with something that's not happening in Blackboard. Okay, so I, ch I checked the collect submissions offline option and then I'm going to ch set my maximum points to 20 and this is categorized as an assignment and then other than that I'm going to click save and then click save here to save my instructions um, and then I also want to grab the link to the actual form so I'm going to copy the link to that form and then edit my web quest to add that link in let's make this a link paste in that link. There we go. Click Save. And then I'm going to make this visible to students. And now I have a functioning web quest assignment that students will complete outside of Blackboard and have a column associated with this. Now I don't need this extra link here to my accessibility document here. So I'm going to delete this because I don't need it anymore. All right, and now I'm going to go to the gradebook and see how this looks. So there's two different views of the gradebook. I'm looking at the student grid mode view of this gradebook. If you wanted to, you could go to the gradable items view, and that will summarize the assignments, their due dates and grading status, and how many to grade. But you could toggle into the grid uh, view of the gradebook, which is similar to what you would have experienced in original. And now you'll see that I have a column here for WebQuest 2 and that will allow me to manually score students for that assignment and if I wanted to if I had a rubric I could align a rubric to this particular assessment and score students with the rubric so the reason why I advocate for this type of tool is that flexibility you do have the option to manually add columns yourself through the little plus button that appears between these columns I'm going to add item but that functionality has limitations. You can't attach a rubric to it if you wanted to. So that is why I advocate for the collect submissions offline dynamic assignment in the content menu because it informs students that there's an assessment and then you can add instructions there to tell students how they're going to be assessed. 
So it's, it's more communicative and a little bit more flexible for you, the instructor. So now I have a set of assignments here that I can configure my gradebook. They're all organized, they're all accurate, the point values are correct, the due dates are all up to date. If I were to go to gradable list mode, I can look at the due dates and they are all accurate to this semester. It's all great. And before I get too farther, I'm going to click on the gear icon to look at my gradebook settings. In this area, I can manage my gradebook schemas. If I wanted to, I could configure letter grades based off of the schemas defined here. I could also edit these letter grade schemas by clicking on the edit option. And I can also delete schemas that I don't need. So that's just a point of housekeeping to keep things a little bit tidy and organized. You can also customize your student performance alerts that you'll get in your activity stream if you want to be notified whenever a student is inactive greater than a set number of days or if their performance is under a certain level. You can also configure your gradebook to automatically assign zeros when students have not submitted work by a due date, or you can uncheck that option. And here's where you can also choose to set up your overall grade. So let's do that. I'm going to go to my setup overall grade area, and I'm going to choose how I want my overall grade to appear. Let's say I want this to be points, and I'll click next. And on this screen, you'll see a list of all the categories you're using in the course, along with the items that belong to it. And there are options here to eliminate items from a calculation. If you don't want something to be included in the calculation, click on the little no symbol next to it and it will be omitted. Okay, so I usually recommend removing anything that you, you are definitely not using. So I'm going to click the no symbols next to the things I'm not going to use just to make sure they're not going to be included. Okay, so now I have my assessments, my activities, and assignments. Okay, and there should be about 210 points in this course. And look to the right of our um, overall grade settings. Notice how my checkbox for base calculation on points earned out of total graded points. This is a running total. Student, this, that means the over, overall grade column is going to return a value that reflects the student's current progress in the course and anything they've not done will not be included in the calculation. All right, and then underneath it, we have the options to choose how the overall grade is displayed. Now it could be displayed as points, letter, percent, or complete and complete. So let's just choose points for the time being and click save. And now I'm going to exit out of this panel and then exit here. And I'll go back to my grid mode and now I can see my overall grade is set to 210 points possible in the course based off of the things I have here. Uh, my total column may not be reflective of everything because I was playing with this earlier. So I noticed something's not right and I see that my new WebQuest assignment was not included. So I'm going to click that and click save. And now we should be all good. Okay, so this extra total column is just there for me in case I want to change my overall grade column to something else, like a percent. It's a quick visual confirmation for me to know how points translate to percentages. Okay, so now my overall grade column is set to 100%. You might see the words 100 points here, but it really means percent. So under my assessments here. I'm going to just give this a try and see how this is working. So I'm going to enter in some points. So you see how my this student here has 100% and 60 points based on the things that the student has been scored on. I'm just going to make sure my grades have posted. There we go. All right. So this grade is based off just of what I've entered scores for. Now, if I were to enter something like a zero here, the grade is going to dip down a little bit. If I were to continue grading, the grades will update like so. Tip number five, make a course available 
To make a course available from the Courses page, click on the three-dot icon on the course and select Open. You may open a course up to 14 days ahead of the course's official start date if desired. You can also access the tools within your course to make your course available through the Details and Actions menu, where you see the Padlock icon. You would just click on the link and then open the course there as well. Now, if you see a message like this, Open Course, you can't change the course status due to the start or end date duration. You can adjust your course's start and end dates by going to the Course Settings option in the top right corner of the screen and then going to Edit and then making a change to your dates. So you could either make a change to your dates or you could set this course to ongoing that does not have a start or end date and click Save. And then once you do that, refresh your screen and then try to make the course available. And now you can click Open to Students to make the course available. Thank you for watching this presentation. If you have questions about navigating Blackboard Ultra or using its tools, contact online learning at matc.edu.